Hey everybody. First up, I'd like to talk about some things that may interest you. Some exciting things for me. So I'm really happy about this and I'm, I'm happy to share it. Number one, I have a new website now. It's iPadAppsCafe.com. I will share the link in the description below so that you can go check that out. It will be a blog that will feature things that I talk about on this channel. Um, I'll have some video links there to my YouTube channel and some videos that I show. I'll be talking about different apps, mostly music apps, but I will be reviewing some other apps as well. So if that interests you and there's apps that you want to check out, go to my website. You can, you can read up on them. I'll, talk, I'll do reviews. Some will be in video, some will be written. I'll have pictures. I'll have links to the apps so that you can go buy them from iTunes from my page. And I'm pretty excited about it. I'm just getting started, so, so the posts are kind of sparse right now as I'm gathering my material and getting things up and running. I'm going to try and post some of my older videos so you can, you know, for filler. But if you haven't seen them yet, there'll be links in there so that you can go see those. Next up, I'm excited to say that I'm going to be doing some reviews on hardware soon. I'll keep you posted on that and let you know how that goes. Uh, I've got a couple of other app reviews I'm doing. One's for a free app. The other one is for a looping app, and I will be working on those shortly. So stay tuned for those. And final piece of news, I will be doing a video interview with Ralph Baumgartel of his video log page. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. He does a lot of stuff with the Berlin School of Ambient and Electronic Music. Um, he's featured several artists from his area in Germany. And uh, he's actually interviewed a few other artists, um, and you can see those on his page. But I'll put a link in the description below to his channel. I suggest going to check it out. Um, I'm not sure when he's going to post our video interview, but it will be coming up here real soon. And I'm really excited to talk to him about it, because it's the first time I've ever had a chance to talk about that kind of thing. So, Anyway, on to today's video. I want to touch base on a topic that earlier this week kind of happened upon me. As I'd mentioned before, I'm playing in a cover band, and one of the songs we're learning is from the 80s, and it had synthesizer in it, and because I'm playing keys in this band as well as guitar, I want to try and get the sounds. Well, without researching it, I was going to make a best guess as to what kind of sound it was. So, I started with Thor. And, you know, I set up the sound. I got real close. I thought, nah, let me try something else. So I pulled open ISEM, worked in it, same results, not quite there, but a very similar sound. Then there was um, Sunriser and Magellan. And then finally I tried FM4, which is way different because it's an FM synthesizer as opposed to an analog modeling synthesizer. Again, I got really, really close to the sound. So it got me thinking, I'm using all these different apps to try and chase a sound, and I'm getting very similar results. Can I, in fact, get replicate results in each of the apps and make them all sound the same? So today's video, I will be featuring about four analog synth apps, FM4 for the digital, and I'm going to use, for the wildcard, I'm going to use Animode. So um, stay tuned. I'm going to try and do it short and sweet and everything else. So you'll read more about it on my blog. Anyway, here we go. So what I have here is Thor Polysonic Synthesizer by Propellerhead. Now, this is taken out of their Reason modules. And what I like about this is it kind of simulates a modular synthesizer, except there's no like patching of cables or anything like that. But you have ways to change out different components of particularly these two, two sections. Um, for the purpose of this demo, I want to keep it pretty straightforward and simple and not get overly elaborate with things. And I want to try and keep things similar from app to app. So this is going to be a two oscillator build with sawtooth waves on both oscillators. Um, I'm going to try and stick to a low pass filter, preferably similar to what I'm doing here, either 12 or 24, depending on what the apps have. Um, 
so this is pretty much going to be the setup and then just a standard envelope generator for the amp section um, I'm not going to do any fancy routing or anything like that so um, we're just going to stick to that all right so this is the basic sound right here I'm going to turn on that I'm going to turn on this uh, second oscillator so this is what you get That's pretty vanilla sounding. I mean, it's a standard saw wave, but basically right now it's it's uh, two saw waves playing in unison. So I'm going to detune the second one. And see how it already gets fatter right there. Okay, so I'm going to kick the drive all the way down, turn the frequency all the way up, turn down the envelope. This should be wide open. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty standard stuff right there. So this is detuned analog sawtooth oscillators with a wide open low pass filter. Okay, that's that's pretty right there is is your standard you know, so let's let's modify the thing here. Let's uh, let's uh, take some of the attack off. And let's open up the the release rate a little bit. That sounds pretty good right there. So that is pretty much a basic two oscillator, wide open filter. Take the attack off, open the release up a little bit on an analog synth. Now let's see if I can replicate that in another app. All right, so now we have Magellan by Yonak Software, and uh, this is very similar in nature in that it is an analog modeling app, and it also has some, I wouldn't call them modular features, but it does have a routing system to it that allows some flexibility and some different things that you can do on this. Um, this kind of reminds me more of the um, Moog Mini, or if you want to talk apps, iMini. You know, it does have the three oscillators, and the controls are laid out differently for each. Um, you have a noise generator, a couple of other things. And um, if you're not familiar with this and you'd like me to do... Um, a demo for this app or actually any of the apps please leave a comment in the uh, comment section below in the video or on my website and I will be happy to do a demonstration of some sounds with these so I went ahead and I've set this up ahead of time just to make the videos go shorter but I've already got it set up as two oscillators yes I know there's a third one here but it is not on and um, right now all you should be able to hear is the top oscillator. Okay, and I want to bring in the volume of the other one. And as you can see by the uh, oscilloscope, it's having an effect. So now I'm going to detune it a little bit. Likewise, let's uh, let's see here. This I actually have the filter bypass, so that's the same as running a, a low pass filter wide open. So we're just going to leave that alone. And let's let's uh, bring up slow the attack. There we go. Let's see now. Let's slow that down a little bit more. I have to say that's pretty similar to the last one so um, yeah that's that's pretty standard stuff okay so we have ISEM by Arturia and um, this is based off the Oberheim SEM so this actually does exist where the Thor and the Magellan were both basically software based 
analog synthesizers. This is actually based off an actual hardware synthesizer. And uh, Arturi is using their true analog modeling technology um, to replicate this. Or it's called true audio emulation. And um, anyway, so a lot of the functions are the same as the actual hardware version. So um, basically I have a sound set up here where I'm using both oscillators set to saw because this only has saw and pulse wave. It does have a third VCO that has a sub oscillator and a noise generator, but we're not going to be using that. Now, the envelope generators on the ISEM are a little more basic than what we're usually used to with the ADSR envelopes. This is just an ADS. It just has the attack, decay, and sustain. So I'm going to try and do the best I can to replicate the release sound that I have um, just by using the decay and the sustain. So, um, And then we'll run the VCF wide open to replicate the same sound as we did before. So. Let's set that up. Okay, it sounds like we're pretty much there. Um, okay, now the difference between the controls on this, if you notice, I was playing with the modulation controls as opposed to the frequency knobs. And I think this is because the frequency knobs on the VCOs of the ISEM only work in step increments or half step increments so you go semitones or um, yeah semitones as opposed to uh, like just detuning and you use the modulation and switch it to either pulse width or frequency um, modulation to get that little bit of a waiver so if you notice you can you can switch them to um, the LFOs that they're controlling so if I wanted to do say a a slower um, LFO rate. I can slow that down a little bit and not have it detune so much. So you get the idea. Okay, so we have a Sunriser analog synthesizer um, here in front of you. Now this is probably the app that I'm the least familiar with. And honestly, I don't know why I don't use it more often. It's actually a very nice app. So I went ahead and saved, like I did with the other ones, I went ahead and saved off an initial patch that I titled Video Demo so that I already had everything set up. Now this is already set up to two sawtooth waves on the oscillators. And the mix is right up the middle here, so I don't have to worry about that. And the filters bypassed as well. This is kind of like Magellan in that sense. So really all I have to do now is detune one of the oscillators and set the release rate and the attack rate. There we go. I'd say that's pretty close. Okay, um, 
now we're shifting gears here. We're going to go to the FM4 uh, by Primal Audio. And this is an emulation of a four operator FM synth. Now, I actually own a Yamaha DX27 four operator FM synthesizer. So um, I've had some experience with um, FM probably quite extensively, probably more than most, because um, FM is kind of hard to work with. Anyway, um, when I was working up my sound in searching for that particular tone for the keyboards, I did try this because the 80s were popularized by... The 80s were um, pretty much... Let's try that again. Okay, the reason I chose to use the FM4 is because the song that we were trying to cover comes from the 80s, and the 80s were probably identified strongly with the Yamaha DX7. Now, mind you, this has two less operators, but during my explorations, I discovered I could get a very similar sound to the dual saw um, VCO analog synths. It's a little different in character, but I'm going to see if I can match it. So here we go. Okay, so for those of you who don't know about frequency modulation synthesis, it essentially starts with their oscillators, which they call operators. And all they are is a sine wave. And that's it. One operator, sine wave. Now the nice thing about FM4 is they do have variations on the theme. Um, so you can pick from these eight different waveforms. But I'm going to stick to the traditional um, saw wave, or uh, sine wave, excuse me. So we've got that. And then in order to make a different sound, you would activate another um, modulator operator. Now, the way this sets up is there's different routings. Well, the one I have is each one stacked on top of the other. So each operator modulates the one below it except for the bottom one. The bottom one is where you actually get your sound. So you'll hear now that I've got it on. Sounds a little bit different. And if you change the volume. It kind of changes. Now I can also change the ratio here. it's starting to get a little brighter sounding. Okay, so now I have a third carrier, or a third modulator activated, and you can already hear it's starting to sound a little more like a saw wave. So it's getting real close. So we're getting there. That's probably about as close as I'm going to get, unless I really spend some time playing with it. And I don't want to bore you guys forever. So now something that the FM4 can do that I know my, I'm pretty sure my DX27 cannot do is um, it has the option to add unison voices. Now, I have not explored this on my DX27 so far because it is a kind of a difficult beast to operate. And if you followed any of my other videos, you see I've been working on an interface to go with that. But that's another video for another time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the two voice unison on. Jeez, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm going to turn, let's try that again. I'm going to turn the two voice unison on and um, we'll see what happens here. That's still really loud. All right, let's try that again. 
Okay, so now I am turning on the two voice unison, and you're going to see how it fattens it up. And for good measure, let's create, let's up the release rate and the attack rate. That's pretty close. Um, I'm sure if I play with it a little bit more and do some more tweaking and get the volume levels just right, I can pretty much nail a sawtooth wave. It's it's what I call a close approximation, but it shows you that with this you can accomplish it. Mm -hmm. 